All right, welcome back for the ground assault phase that we're going to work on. I'm wearing a headset today because I want to try some sound test issues to see. Sometimes when I use the mic on the laptop, it seems a little echoey, and I want to do some stuff. I don't really like wearing the headset because uh, it just seems to be, I don't know, looks dumb, and I don't really care to have a headset on, but... If it'll give better sound, then I don't care. I did buy a, a mic that was supposed to work. Um, I haven't figured out how to set it up yet. I set it up and I thought it was working, and then, <laughs> and then I found out I was just using the mic on the laptop anyway. So uh, I'm more of a gamer, not really a, a streamer, YouTuber, I guess. But anyway, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and do the ground assaults. Um, so. We will get started here and see how it goes. I'll probably do like before. I'll do, you know, the first couple really detailed. And then after that, I'm going to kind of blow through them. Otherwise, this video would be like two hours long if I got to talk through every ground assault. So let me know if you guys like that or not. And I was told I don't mention it enough. Make sure you subscribe by clicking below and click on notifications. And if you'd like to support the channel, um, any of the if they are running ads on it that's YouTube that's not me but I do have links to stuff that goes to Amazon and I have an Amazon affiliate uh, account so if you buy walk them ride through Amazon uh, I get credit for that or you could buy it directly on our website littlebigwars.com okay so anyway let's go ahead enough of the commercial let's uh, get her done so ground assaults now there's going to be some special things in here we'll bring up, but uh, um, there'll be some. Uh, Trying to think of what I'm trying to say here. I don't like. I put this stuff in here about ground assaults. Um, this says recon units may not convert mandatory step losses into retreats. All German ground assaults receive an automatic one call. Oh, these are specific. I'm sorry. These are specific to Walk them Rhine. So what I do is I actually record all these and then I come back and narrate them. And um, and just a, just a disclaimer, I am on Sudafed right now. I have a cold. So, so I got a little bit of brain fog apparently because I'm like trying to figure this out. But So these are the special rules for Walk them Rhine. Okay, so ground assaults. Recon units may not convert mandatory step losses into retreats. All German ground assaults receive an automatic one-column shift to the right. Uh, German motorized anti-tank units may advance enter, a, after combat as leg units. Exception, the German side does not receive the above shift when conducting ground assaults against units subordinate to the U.S. 4th Infantry Division, because they were not surprised. Uh, General Barton, the division commander, had a bad feeling the night before and canceled all leave, so his division was on higher alert. So first I'm going to get rid of all these spades and things for uh, firing. So I got to click each. So basically, you know, using Vassal, it records every move you make. And I do two kinds of videos. This one's more instructional, so I want to make sure that if I have to look something up, that I can do it while I'm recording, right? Uh, or before I'm recording, well, I'm just playing it because if I'm doing Vassal, right, and I and I'm just you know putting in these notes and I'm moving pieces, you only see that. You don't see it. Could have took me ten minutes to look up a rule. You won't see that unless I'm recording it. And then I like to edit that out because I don't want to spend five ten minutes looking for something or asking a question on a form and waiting. You know, so that's why I decided to do it like that. So you guys, let me know if you prefer one or the other, I guess, you know, they both have their place, right? This is more technical, so I want to get her down. And if I'm just doing a playthrough of a game, I like to do that with a little commentary as I'm doing it so you can hear the thinking process. But, you know, you guys give me feedback on what you like or don't like. So I removed all the spades. The spades, remember, we use those for firing. So the first ground assault. So I'm going to mark the target hex. So there we're marking the target hex. And then I'm going to you know, mark the attackers, and then I, I'm going to put this off to the side so we know that we're doing stuff here. But I, I don't want to put the spades all over everything because it gets kind of cluttery looking and kind of yucky. I like as few markers on a map as possible. I like to see the units, but 
I also want enough information so we know what's going on, right? Okay. All right, so uh, identify the, the attacking hexes. I just said I'm going to bump the spade around like you saw me do, put it off to the side, and then I'm going to use the Gauss chart for the rest of this. So now I'm playing solo, so I have to look at both of them. Eventually, I believe when you're playing somebody else, you can look when they're attacking and who's attacking anyway. I'm not 100% sure on that, but, um, you know, they're attacking you. So basically we have the 326th here attacking the 99th with an anti-tank unit, and he's an entrenchment two. This is after all the offensive and defensive fire support. Remember, that's opposite in this early morning AM attack. And these guys here had to retreat, so they're missing out on five attack factors that they could have had. So, so the first thing you want to do is, let's see here. So that's retreating. Um, I think it's the next one down. Okay, so here's what you do for, uh, you identify the defending hex, identify the attacking hexes, then you determine unit status. If it's isolated, you check for surrender, determine if you're using standoff armor, declare use of on-hand supply. So let me kind of cover a few of those things as we're going through it. So first you check to see, are they isolated? No, they have a supply path, they're fine. If they were surrounded, we're not going to get into the isolation rules, but you would check for them. And they give a nice little thing here that what rule it is. Then you determine standoff armor. So, like, if we had armor that was, you, you can decide to stand off your armor. Uh, in this one, I don't believe we have any armor. But if we had armor, you can decide to do them as standoff, which means they can't take casualties. I'm pretty sure on that. But you only get half of the combat strength, right? And then there's sometimes you can only do standoff armor, okay? And when we get to one of those, we'll do it. Declare use of on-hand supply. So if you were isolated, but you still had supply, you have to determine determine if you're going to use on-hand supply uh, or if you're an attacker and you're out of uh, supply range, uh, don't have a supply path, then you have to decide if you're going to use that. And I believe the rule is if you only use half your strength, then you don't use it up, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But you have to just, and we'll get, we'll get to one of those when we do it. I don't want to get into every rule <coughs> if it doesn't apply. Then you have to check number four. Is it a rest game turn or extended night activity? Uh, then you have to decide if you're going to defend in half or not because then you don't get fatigue. Then you can attempt a hasty bridge, a hasty bridge demo if they're trying to come across a bridge. And if that doesn't work or you can't do that, then the Germans would check for bridge collapse. We don't have any of that going on here. Right, so this is our spot. They're attacking Hoffen. So, and here's your hasty bridge and bridge clap stuff. Then step four. All right, we determine the GAV. Okay, which is the I can't remember what that stands for, but basically we're checking for modifiers. Ground assault value. So CS strength modifiers. Now we don't have any here. But if you're ammo depleted artillery, you get a defense factor of one. If there's two or more of these reasons on here, you're quartered. Okay? So you don't ever get more than quartered. And you can go down the list. I'm not going to go down the whole list, but it's it's pretty basic stuff that we'd all understand, right? If you're defending with on hand supply, uh, does not go to auto supply half. Like so if you decide you're not going to use the on-hand supply, right? Uh, fatigue level 1, fatigue level 2. Uh, leg units attacking into or out of a march are halved. You know, bridges and fords are halved. Uh, those are for leg units. Mechanized over a bridge are half. Ford or bridge, I guess. So you can read through all those. I'm not going to do all those every time because that, you, you can read them, right? They're pretty self-explanatory. They're not that complicated. So we had no modifiers like that at all. So what we end up with is the attacker has 14. Okay, so if we add up all those and all those, the attacker has 14, the defender has 8. 
So that's a 1.75 to 1, which the normal rules of Gauss would say that you round down. So that would be a 1 to 1. But when I started playing Gauss with other people online, they had a house rule, and I'm not a house rule guy. I don't typically like house rules. So, but this one I like. So this one, they taught me that if you had 1.75 to 1, you could make a roll, and if you roll a 75 or less, you get to bump it to 2 to 1. If you roll a 76 or higher on a D100 roll, you get to drop to 1 to 1. Seems fair, you know, because it kind of swings both ways. So I am going to use that house rule because I like it. Uh, but if you're playing Goss straight up, you'd round this to 1 to 1. So... You know, like I said, I do not typically like house rules. I like to play things the way they're written. This was not a deal breaker for me. Um, and I've gotten so used to it, I just use it when I play solo now, too. So I rolled uh, rolled a D100, so 2D10. I got a 28, so I get to boom, round that to 2 to 1. Okay? So the next thing we look at is it's 2 to 1, and they're in a village, Right? So the defender is here. It's in a village. The west wall does not count for the allies. So they're in rough with a village. So if we go look here, we want to see what line we start at. So clear is line one. So you go on this bottom line. Rough, woods, marsh, hedgerow, and village are line two. So you go to line two here, right? And you go to the two to one which ends up being column H. You see right here, 2 to 1. It's 2 to 1, column H, line 2, because of the village. Now, if it's a forest or bocage or rough 2 or town, you'd be on line 3. So 2 to 1 would be right here, right? And if you're in a city, 2 to 1 starts back here. So it kind of adjusts based on the terrain. If you're in the clear, it'd jump all the way to here. Anytime you can be the attacker on this side, these are better for you than these. All right, so we're in the H column. So now we go on to column shifts. So the first thing you want to work on is column shifts. So you have defender column shifts favorable to the attacker and shifts favorable to the defender. Uh, determine column, not defender column shifts, determine column shifts. So we're going to do, I think I did it in this order, right? Attackers here, defenders here. Okay, so if you go down the list, all right, we have guys in prepared assault. So attack units in PA mode, you get one to the right. It's just one total, not one for each one. If all attack units are in maneuver reserve mode, you'd get one more to the right. We're not in maneuver reserve. Uh, per artillery shift on a defending unit, max out at two, you'd get one to the right. Did we get one of those for the right? No, because there was none. Now, we also get one to the right because, remember, every ground assault in this turn, we get a surprise one, right? So we get one to the right. The next one we got, and I'm not going to read through all of these every time, you know, because, again, it's just going to waste a lot of time. But the next one we got is defensive work. Each attacking stack with one engineer step and at least one other unit only cancels def defensive work shifts, okay? That's one to the right. So the most you could have is two, right? Because we have an enter entrenchment two here. So I have an engineer there. You see that the dude with the ups upside down E? And then I got one up here. I got some divisional engineers. Actually, that's the same divisional engineers. It's just a step broken down from that guy, right? Because he's a two-step engineer. So that gives us two engineers. So we got two right. So we're going two more to the right for the engineers. All right. And remember, if this was an IP and I had two engineers attacking, you only get to cancel the IP. You don't get a right shift extra. You only get to cancel that. So if, you're, if this was an entrenchment three, I would still get two shifts because I have two engineers. An entrenchment two, I get two shifts because it's entrenched two. If it was an IP with one, I only get benefit of one engineer. Okay, I'd still get the attack factors, right, which are big whopping ones, but you can only cancel as much as the defensive work, basically.
Okay, so that ends up being four to the right uh, for the attacker, right? So we started out on the H column, right? Two to one right here. And then we went one, two, three, four to the M column. Now, I'm showing you that. That's not really how you do it. You subtract the higher or the lower from the higher, and that's how many column shifts. Because let's say I was out here at a seven to one, you can't go anymore. So I wouldn't go one, two, three, four, and I'm here, and then minus the defender. It's the overall net, and we'll go over that. But just wanted to show you if there were no defensive modifiers, that would put us on the M column, which is really good for the attacker. So the defender, we get to go one left because we're on a vantage point right here, the triangle. We get two left for the entrenchment two. So we still get the entrenchment, but the engineers cancel it. So they basically are canceling each other out. So we end up with three to the left. So the net is one to the right because we had four to the right up here, uh, four to the right, and then three to the left. So you minus the three from the four, we end up one to the right, so we're going to end up on the J column. Okay, so we just eked over into this area, which if you look, these give a better result, right? So if I roll on line CC, it would be a star one versus straight up two. So it's a little bit better, right? So that's good for the attacker. All right. Next thing we're going to go through is... Def uh, DRMs. We're going to look at proficiency rating, combat reserves, regimental integrity bonus, armor, and anti-tank. Okay, so we're going to go through those four modifiers. <coughs> I got to apologize. I got a cold today. I don't know. I might just do one ground assault here, post the video up, and then I'll go through the rest of them on a different day when I'm not dealing with this froggy voice. All right, so let's run through DRM. So the PR for the Germans, um, we're gonna. You have to declare your lead unit. So I'm gonna declare the first battalion of the 756th Regiment. And if you look at the number under the triangle there, it's a five. That's his attack proficiency rating, which is not that great. A six is his defense. Okay. So I'm gonna lead with him. Um, you don't want to lead with the engineers because if you take any casualties, you'll lose them and they're valuable. And they're, if you look down here, we have the same thing. We got a guy with a five and a six, and these companies usually aren't any better. And you, again, I don't want to lead with them because then if they take a casualty, they're dead. The lead unit takes your first hit. So the allies also have to declare because there's more than once, so they're going to use the third battalion of the 395th Regiment, 99th ID. And that would normally be a seven, but because they're an entrenchment two, it turns into an eight. So it's eight against six. That's plus two to the allies. And I'm not sure how I got a negative 50 mo uh, modifier there. Should be a negative 10. So let's see if we mess that up. Because for each, oh no, I'm sorry, five to eight, it, it, it's not a plus two. What I messed up on was the plus. It's a plus three. Not a plus two. So if you go over here, the proficiency, if the attacker has better proficiency, it's plus five for each one. There is not a max. And if the defender has the better one, it's a minus. So now we are on basically the J column with a minus 15 die roll so far. But there's more to do. The next you would do is anybody in combat reserve. But we won't have anybody in combat reserve this turn because that's not allowed on the um, surprise turn. Uh, German, I don't think Germans could put people in combat reserve. That could be something I should have done or I should look at. But next we'll look at the RIB, Regimental Integrity Bonus. So Regimental Integrity Bonus, um, let's see if I can find, so the new rules have a really good Description, regimental integrity. All right, so let's go find that. I want to show you that versus just trying to wing it. 
So regimental integrity bonus is basically when you have regiments that are fighting together. So you have, you know, different battalions of the same regiment are fighting together. Uh, they have some benefits there. So to be eligible for that, okay, he, here's the units that are eligible for that. If a unit's in PA or tactical mode and an infantry type unit, not engineer of the same regiment or a hybrid unit of the same combat command or armored recon battalion of the same CAV group or German engineer companies or battalions of the same leg or mechanized formation or German fusilier companies or battalions of the same leg or mechanized or so the list goes on and tells you what can qualify, right? German recon, German armored fighting vehicles. And it gets into armored brigades for the Commonwealth and that kind of stuff, right? I'm not going to go through every one of them, but um, here's what you need to do. Award the attacker one rib for each eligible participating unit. Award the defender one rib for each eligible unit in the defending hex and or in any hex adjacent to the defending hex. The adjacent units may have already participated in a ground assault this segment. However, they may not provide rib uh, to ground assault. Uh, they may not have provided. So you get to do it one time, right? So they might have been in a ground assault, but if they provided a rib benefit, they can't do it again. Uh, units in adjacent hexes, there's a little bit of a rule here based on the terrain. It's got to be a battalion-sized unit and have at least two steps remaining. And, oh, that's not the train issue. So be assigned to the same regiment as the unit, thus regimental integrity bonus, right? So if you look here, the allies have none because they have a anti-tank company attached to them and there's nobody next to them. So there's no way for them to have any. The Germans get three, one for each battalion and one for the engineers. You have those engineers up there, the 326th. Uh, and I'm wondering... Did I do that wrong? Be a battalion size unit have at least two steps remaining. Yeah, so I gave the I did give the access the benefit here. We'll see if that matters. That's only a one step engineer because we have the other engineer step over here. So we're reducing the entrenchment, but it's got to be a two step unit, I believe. So I may have given the Germans some benefits on this turn. And that's fine. Remember we talked about that earlier? Don't get wrapped up in all the details. And if you make a mistake, once you learn it, move on from there, right? That's why I like posting these videos, because if I make mistakes and you guys catch it, by all means, point it out. And if and if I find them later, I'll, I'll point them out. Okay, so the Germans end up, I gave them three, because you have the 1752 and the two, uh, oh, no, wait. Oh, did I really mess up? I really did. I was thinking these guys were the same. I had the 1751. So they technically would have no rib bonus, and I gave them three. Okay. So that so that ends up being a wash so far, I'm saying, but it should have been a negative 15 so far. And then armor anti-tank. They both only have anti-tank units, so there's no armor anti-tank modifier. We'll get into some of those when we uh, do them, but let's see. Um, I may just fix this on here if it's quite a bit different. So it's, I'm saying it's a J column with no modifiers, and I'm always going to roll the attacker first, then the defender, right? So remember, I made a mistake here. I thought I had the 752nd, and you have to have two. Let's just check the rule real quick. Yeah, so... Eligibility is, I don't know, this is eligible units in adjacent hexes. So maybe that's not wrong. That's when I'll have to post on the question here, because here it just says German engineer company or battalion of the same leg or mechanized. Yeah, engineer company. So it doesn't have to be two. So it still should have just been a plus. 10 because that's the 751st and that's the 752nd i'm wondering if i yeah oh and that's the 753rd <laughs> so this is a really horribly coordinated attack by me uh mostly because they're just all spread out right so i rolled a 78 for the attacker and a 10 10 which remember tens are zero so a double zero for the defender which is a really kick butt roll for the defender 
So we ended up with uh, uh, seven, uh, 83 is a one and one mandatory, one discretionary, and a double zero uh, would end up being a star one, one. So it's a proficiency rating check, a discretionary, and a mandatory uh, to the attacker. So we'll, we'll go through those next on how we're going to um, apply those. And then I really quick want to check and see if the results would be a lot different because it's a difference of five. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. And this was a little bit of a mess up on my part, but we caught it during the replay. So we, and, and I'm going to show you how a lot of times if you make little mistakes, they really don't affect the game anyway. So that's that whole thing we talked about earlier. Don't get wrapped up in making mistakes. If you find that you're doing something wrong or you catch a mistake, just continue on from there. But if I'm doing it on a video, I want to try to fix it. But here was our original rolls, right? So um, I don't know why I put a plus five there. So I was really messing it up. But basically up here, the attacker rolled a 78 and the defender rolled double zero. And that's good because defender, you want to be low. Attacker, you want to be high. So they both really had good rolls. Now, we had messed, we, meaning me, messed up on the thing because we had a uh, negative 15 um, for PR, right? Because the the defensive PR of a 7 turns into an 8 because of the entrenchment 2. And the best we had that we wanted to use was a 5. So that's, that's negative 5 for each difference. That was a negative 15. Then I gave them a plus uh, 15 for rib bonus, but that's the 751st guy right here, and the guy up north is the 752nd. It should have only been a plus two for the engineer, uh, the engineer and the 752nd. So it would have been a net result of negative five, okay? So let's take a look at what those results did. So a 78, I don't know why I put a plus five there, a 78 is a one-to-one, one, or one-and-one. One. So one man discretionary, one mandatory hit to the defender. It should have been a 73. So we're on the J column. If you look right here, we are fortunate that the a 73 is the same and as a 78, it ends up being a one-one one right here. Okay, so that's how we get that. So we have the roll on the J column. And we take this result over here. You only do this side over here, which just happens to be the same, if you're rolling on one of these columns here, okay, on this side. So now we do the defender on the J column. He got a double zero, which is zero, which is right here. But technically, it would have been another negative five. So negative nine to five is the same. So a negative five result that we really got and the zero result that I thought we got ends up being the same result. So it didn't affect our results. That actually happens more than you'd think. Go back and check some modifiers. A lot of times if it's only a plus or minus five, it doesn't affect anything. It can, but it usually doesn't. So that's another reason. Just don't get all wrapped up in perfection. I mean, we want to play it the best we can, but I think for most people, if you're looking for perfection, live wargaming is not going to do that because we make mistakes as people. So... Let's go ahead and walk through that. Okay, so the first, so the attacker has to do their results first. They have to decide if they're going to try to hold, if they're going to retreat, because that will affect what the defender has to do. And it also can help the defender if they don't stick it out. So we have to take our first hit, right? And that's going to be to our lead unit. So we're going to take that. But first, we're going to check this. So we have to make uh, a star PR check, okay, to see if we have... Uh, two, dis, two dis, the star is a PR check, and if you fail, then this would turn to a 2-1. If you pass, it stays as a 1-1, one, one, right? So the PR check is first. I roll a 5. Now, to make a PR check, you have to roll under your PR. If you tie your PR, then that is uh, a fail. So... So he, he tied, and that fail converts it to the 2-1 result. So now we have two discretionary, one mandatory hit. So we're going to take a hit no matter what. What we need to do now is decide if we're going to take those two discretionary hits or if we're going to retreat and 
So the lead unit's going to take that hit. I'm going to show you this while I'm hovering over it. You should be able to see it change. So there I took the hit, right? And don't forget to record your hits up here as losses for step losses because you get to convert those to replacements later. Okay. So here's what I'm... So I, I typed out some of my thoughts because I don't want to have to try to remember everything I was thinking because there's a lot of different things. But so here's the thing. If I try and hold... I have two hits I have to take. And if you look at the hit priority, right? Let's see if I can find this quickly. Mm, I can't. Oh, all right. So here's the resolving mandatory hits. So the first unit that takes a hit is a lead unit. This would be resolving any hits, honestly. Okay. So I already took the hit on my lead unit. Then the lead armor anti-tank unit, if you used armor anti-tank factors, would be next. We didn't use any. So the next unit that would take it is an engineer if they provided a column shift to the combat. Okay? Then it says if mandatory step losses remain after reaching max step loss, convert all remaining mandatory hits to discretionary All if all defending units are in a fort. And those units have met max step losses and mandatory hits remain. You can ignore all discretionary. So it just goes through the steps very nicely. And then this is resolving discretionary hits. <coughs> so here's what I'm thinking. I've, I've already taken my hit up here on the, on the 752nd. They've taken their hit. If I try to roll and I need a four or less to hold... Now I got two more hits I have to take because I'm pushing the attack, right? I didn't, as the shells were coming in, we didn't fall back and retreat. We kept pushing the attack, so it's going to be bloodier. The problem is I'm going to lose that engineer and then by, by default that engineer because they're the next two because they contribute into the combat. That seems a little costly, okay? If I retreat, okay, the defender... If you remember, their result is they suffered one discretionary, one mandatory. So if I retreat, they get to, for each retreat hex, they get to drop a discretionary, right? So it's like, well, I'd like to get two hits on this guy, but, you know, right now I have one hit on him. I've taken a hit. Do I want to take two more hits? And I got to roll a four or less. So it's zero, one, two. So I got a 50% chance, basically, right? And, I'm, and then if, here's the bummer. If you fail, right? So let's say I roll that and I fail, I get to retreat and I get to take all the hits. <laughs> so it's not good. And so I'm like, okay, I got a 50% chance. So here's what I decided. I decided to retreat. So I retreat one, two. They each, they each have to retreat two because you retreat once for each, and I'll go through this real quick. So resolving discretionary hits. You can attempt to hold the current position or attempt a limited retreat or conduct a full retreat. So I conducted a full retreat, okay? Um, discretionary hits are reduced by one each time the player retreats all units, one hex, or assigns one fatigue hit to all units or inflicts one step loss to one unit. Max step loss may or may not apply. Now, we'll get into that in some other combats, but I decided to retreat, and leg units, uh, I think they got it on the chart here somewhere, maybe, maybe not, um, but there is a chart that shows you uh, retreating. Uh, leg units can retreat up to two. Uh, they can only You can only retreat one in artillery, but in a GA you can retreat two. So I decided to retreat them two which absorbs those two discretionary hits. Okay, so that's going to leave, and then I then I take the prepared assault off. Okay, so now the defender, he gets to ignore, ignore the discretionary hits. He could ignore up to two if he had them, but he didn't because I retreated two. Um, but he has one mandatory hit to take, so if we're looking at this here, you should see that. Okay, so there I activated him, and boom, you can see he flipped over to his weaker side. So now he's a 4, 5, 6 with the little lighter uh, stats on the bottom because he's reduced. And you can see the two-step diamonds 
inside that red square there. I don't like how it does the red square, but I don't have a choice. Okay, so he was the lead battalion, so he took it. You couldn't just say, well, I'm going to get rid of that anti-tank gun because I'd rather keep that infantry. It's the lead unit, and I led with that. So, And then I get rid of that artillery shift because those will come off at the end of the turn, and we're all done up here. Now, let's evaluate this attack. So we started out with everybody full strength. Uh, except I think the 6th Panzer Army anti-tank was already down to one step. So we've lost one, two infantry steps, and we did one infantry step loss here, and we didn't take any ground. So I'm not sure that's great. It's it's a 2 to 1 loss ratio. It would have been acceptable to do 2 to 1 or even 3 to 1 if I could have cracked this thing and had them run, but that didn't happen. Okay, and then we activated him because if you're the target of a ground assault, now I turned him right side up so then during the next turn he'll be able to move if I want to or whatever. And then if if you're touching anybody, like there was a guy up here, remember, attacking, so this guy will end up activating. All right, so he flips up because if you're next to an enemy that does a ground assault, you get to... So now we've activated these M10 tank destroyer company and a recon company. That might not seem like a big deal, <clears throat> but in these early stages, it's a pretty big deal because anybody that we got that can move to help will be great. So I think what I want to do here is do one more combat, hopefully one that's a little less messy because I did it right, hopefully. <laughs> so, um, And then what I'll probably do is probably just post this one, and then I'm probably just going to go through the ground assaults faster. I may end up going through and editing and adding a video onto the back of it with the other ground assaults. The biggest factor right now is my throat's really dry from this cold, and I'm clearing my throat a lot and coughing and sniffing, and I don't want to make a video like that that's constantly doing that. So I think I'm going to pull production today. But let's take a look at this last one. So there's the defending hex. And these are the two attacking hexes. So here we have the 277th Infantry Division. We got five, and we got six, so we have 11 there. And if we look at the defender, we get uh, seven because you use the, the second number as the defense. Now, he's only in an IP. So that's uh, 1.57 to 1. So I roll the die. I get a 17. So that's 57 or less would give me a bump up. So boom, we get to bump up to it. Uh, I'm sorry. I did all. Uh, did I do that right? Oh, okay. Here's here's the deal. So 1.5 to 1 is the 3 to 2 column. So I had a 7% chance of bumping up to the 2 to 1. Okay. So I didn't take the 2 to 1 because that'd be a little cheesy. And I'm jumping from 1 to 1 to 2 to 1 because if I had lost, I would have still ended up at the 3 to 2 column or 1.5 to 1. So that can get a little hairy when it's not 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1. But Again, if we were playing this game straight up, it wouldn't have mattered. This is a this is a bonus thing that I do. This is a house rule that I was taught by some of the gamers that I like. Remember, I typically do not like house rules because I like the way games are designed by the designers. I think, you know, they've been play tested and whatever. But I do like this one, so it's the three to two column. So uh, <clears throat> three to two. Let's go ahead and look at our train here. Uh, here we have forest. We also have limited terrain, right? So that's why this attack is a little pathetic uh, because you can only attack with what can go into the limited terrain. I could have had more units here, but not. I could have had a little bit more here, but not much. There's also the factor of what actually starts next to there. And if you remember, this guy got driven off by artillery fire. So, all right, so we're in a forest. So if you go to the forest line okay forest is right here on line three and we serve we're at three to two so you find line three go to three to two so that puts us here on the f column because now we're in line three if we were in line two we'd be over another one right here right so if it was a village but this they get the benefit of the woods all right so there's the attackers and let's go ahead and go through the shifts. So we got one right for surprise. 
We get one right for the prepared assaults. And we only have one engineer, but that's all we could use because it's an IP. So we get one right for the engineer. So that gives us a total of three shifts to the right. Defender shifts, they get one left for the IP, uh, one left for adjacent friendlies, okay? And they get them for these guys right here, but not these guys, and I'll show you why. Over here on the column thing, each adjacent attacking hex with units friendly to the defender that were not already in a ground assault. Okay, if the attacker is in movement covering terrain, units must be adjacent to the attacker and the defender. Each AS on adjacent defender cancels this shift. So, you know, if you would have shelled these guys, they couldn't help. But they're right here. They're next to the guys defending. They're next to both because they're in movement covering terrain. Now, if these guys were in the open, and these guys could then offer some help. Okay, but they're not. They're in the woods. So... Um, so we only get this guy. So that gave us a shift, though, which is big. All right, so that ends up being a net shift of one to the right. So we go from the F column right here to the G column. So this is where we're going to be rolling. Okay, die roll modifiers, the proficiency rating first. So the Germans are going to lead with uh, the 1189, or I'm sorry, one. 989, I put 189, but that's wrong. And that one is attacking with five against a defender with seven. Okay. Um, so that's plus two, but I did forget that there was a, oh no, this, there's no ET for this. So, so that's correct. So that's seven to five. So that's a, that's a minus 10 because the, that goes in the defender's favor. There's no combat reserves because they weren't allowed for the Americans at all this turn. Let's go at ribs. Germans, we say, get three. Allies gets two. So it's a plus modifier. So here's where um, they're attacking the second battalion of the 395th. And the first battalion of the 395th is right next to the defender. So he gets to add to that. The attacker, we have the 1989th and the 2989th and we have the engineer so this time we actually have the regiments like we're supposed to so they get three allies get two that's a modifier of plus five so that puts us at a net modifier of negative five there's no armor to deal with again so we don't have to worry about that so we do the attacker roll which is a 13 which is pretty abysmal so it's a negative five so a 13 will become an eight so if we go look on the G column, an eight, we got we to gotta get at least a 25 to get even a proficiency check. So that is no effect. And a 52 minus five is 47. So if you go down here to 47, that is a star one, which is what I did put here. So we have to make a proficiency check now. The bummer about proficiency checks is it's based on your lamest unit uh might be might be lead unit with the pr i guess i'd have to look but we don't have to worry because it's a nice three so we pass that so what that would do remember the star would turn into a uh uh discretionary hit but we passed it so no discretionary hit but we still have a mandatory hit um so we're gonna have to take that with our lead unit right here All right, so he takes the hit. And I'm basically saying it's a pretty rough start for the Germans. So here we basically had to retreat and go away. And here we took a hit and did nothing. So uh, I marked the wrong guy, I think. I think I fixed that later, but it was the 199989 that I marked the 21989. Okay, then we get... Now we get to activate some guys, right? So they were they were the victims of a ground assault, so they get to flip. And then remember, anybody next to these guys who did a ground assault will also get to activate. So now we've activated two battalions of the 99th Infantry Division. And again, anything we can activate is a bonus. So we'll take off the two prepared assaults. 
and they'll get rid of this artillery shift because it's not going to affect anything in play. So 277th is starting to take a little bit of a beating, right? So we'll see how that goes. Now we got this guy down here. Now here's the thing with the Germans. Normally you can try to call off assaults, right? So like if this guy here was over here and he retreated here, so now I'm missing four points that I really wanted, you can try to call off prepared assaults, but not on the surprise turn. Everybody has to attack that was marked to attack. You don't get to say, well, we're going to adjust them to not attack because you drove off too many guys. So you don't get that, you don't get that benefit. So let's go ahead and do one more here. Let's do this one. And then I'll probably just start chunking through them a little bit faster, but I'll probably post this video. And uh, I haven't decided yet if I'll post this or if I'll just do the other one tomorrow, maybe if I'm feeling a little better. We'll see. Okay, so here I said, well, I, okay, so remember, you don't get to look at what your opponent has. And I don't remember, I mean, there's so many, there's so many guys. I mean, if you look, you can zoom way out, right? I mean, there's a lot of counters on this if you're on this map. So I can't remember where everything is. And I purposely don't try to look at landmarks and things like that that are going to help me out to remember things because I want the fog of war. So here I was hoping this guy was just a company, but he's a full-strength battalion in an entrenchment. So I was hoping these guys were maybe, because there's spots on this map where I know, that, especially the 28th Infantry Division, where they just have a company, or like up here, right? There's just two companies. So I was kind of hoping I was going to run into something thin here, but it was not thin. So we're going to have to see how it goes. So this ends up being 8 to 7, so 1.14 to 1. So I make my roll to see if I can do better than that. Oh, here's where I'm fixing that guy. Remember, I marked the wrong guy. All right, so here I'm going to make the roll to see if this guy can bump up a little bit. I get a 97, so no way, not even close. All right, so it ends up being one to one. So if we look at the terrain he's in, he's in this darker green, which is forest. And unless you're in a city, you ain't going to get better than forest. So that's going to be line three at one to one. So that's going to put us on the D column way over here. Not a great deal. All right, so shifts. We get one right for surprise. We get one right for our prepared assault. So we get two to the right for the attacker. The defender gets one left for a vantage point. There's that red triangle again. So that vantage point is nice. Uh, two left for the entrenchment. You can see where the benefit of not, or where not having the engineers is hurting us. So that ends up being three to the left. So it's a net of one to the left. And if you remember, we were attacking here and they smoked our unit with engineers. And I believe we tried to hold and failed. So we lost our engineers because they ran off to the north with the 991st first battalion. So we started on line three on the D column with Forrest. So now we move to the C column. So this is where we're going to be rolling. So we got to get at least the 75 to even do anything. And if they roll a zero or better, they're going to, they're going to score a hit. So this ain't looking great for the Germans. So the PR is five to eight again, right? Because it's a seven, but it gets bumped because of the entrenchment two. And these guys are both fives. And I, I said, I declared my <coughs> lead unit as the second battalion. All right. So, so far we're at a negative 15 with a PR of eight against five. So it's just getting better. There's no combat reserves. Ribs, they both got a two. So here we got the 393. And here we got the 393, the first battalion. This is the second battalion. Uh, they are not in movement covering terrain, so he does not have to be next to both. He just has to be next to the defender. Um, maybe even just the attacker. If he was over here, he might be able to, but I know he does if he's by the defender because he is not in movement covering terrain. He is just in rough with a um, for location. Yeah, so location is occupational, and rough is, I believe, occupational or nothing. Nothing. So 
They end up with that, and then these guys each give each other rib for two, so it's a wash. There's no armor, so it's a C column with a negative 15. That's pretty brutal. So we rolled a 33 and a 45, which ends up being an 18, which again, we needed to roll a 75 to do anything, so that's no effect. And let's see what a 30 does. Okay, so if you go look at 30 down here on the defender's column, that's in this row right here, that ends up being a 1-2. So that's two mandatory hits and one discretionary hit. And there's no effect on the defender, so there's no reason for me to try to hold and absorb that discretionary hit because he's not going to take any hits. So each unit, so the lead unit would be the first one. The other unit takes a hit, and then I'm going to retreat one to get rid of that discretionary hit. So there they go. Um... So the rule is normally go toward the HQ. So the new charts for me have a really good uh, retreat priority. So basically the rule says if there's more than one hex available, retreat in, choose the hex using the below criteria in the order given. So first thing you say is into a hex not adjacent to an enemy unit, then into a hex closer in hexes to the unit's superior HQ, then into a hex covering terrain along any type of a road and not overstacking, okay? So it says if more than one hex meets the criteria, move to the next criteria. So right here, when it says into a hex not adjacent to enemy units, all right, I was here, so I could technically retreat here, here, and here, all right? So then you, you go down to the next thing. Into a hex closer in hexes to the unit superior HQ, Okay, so it's right here. The HQ is right here. Oh, so maybe I should have retreated there. <laughs> it's like, but I ended up retreating here because nobody was here. And then I didn't overstack, which is number five. You could also retreat along any kind of a road. There was no road issue here. So I'm wondering if I needed to go this way towards the HQ and then overstack. Only because that was the only hex that applied that. So... I didn't find this until later on, and I really like how this makes it really simple because before we kind of had to guess, so here I ended up taking the non-overstack, but that's not one of the highest priorities. All right, so we got one more attack here, and um, I think what I'll probably do is pause it here for now because I got a lot of attacks. Right? I got one here, one here, one here, one here. One up here, one over here, a whole bunch down here on the 28th Infantry, and all these. So it's just like we're launching the big attack. And I got this cold that's kind of killing me, so I think I'll post this up and let you guys take a look at some of those ground assaults. And I'm a little disappointed that I made that retreating mistake and that up there, up here, I made that uh, PR mistake. But it is what it is, and we're catching them, and that's the main thing is that we're catching them. So there's always a lot to learn in this game. Um, that's why I really like it. I like the crunchiness of Goss. And um, anyway, so I hope you're enjoying the series. Please comment below, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. I will uh, continue these uh, ground assaults until we're done, and then we can move on. I, the sad thing is I'm actually on to the 16 p.m. turn, so I'm a little behind on putting up videos because I've really been enjoying playing it. <laughs> and so I've been a little lazy about putting up a video because I want to get, I want to see, I'm doing that little thing, remember, where I'm going to test a bunch of bulge games and kind of see how they all compare to the opening day to see how close they are to each other. <clears throat> it's not really a who's right or wrong on the game, but just to see how they compare. And uh, I'm really getting excited to get to the night turn. And then um, I want to check two, maybe a third Third, I said I wasn't going to do Ardennes 44, but I might throw Ardennes 44 in there as the third game that I compare to. So there'd be a total of four. There'd be Goss, uh, Last Blitzkrieg, Attack in the Ardennes, and Ardennes 44. Those are the four that I have that I play. So, all right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in a little bit.